Hey, good morning, everybody. It's early mornings out of late. It's Sunday morning. Did you crush the Saturday? <laughs> One more day to crush the weekend. The toast is toast and the butter is buttering. I'm here, you're here, and big up updates about your second stimulus check and second stimulus package. As no deal, <laughs> no deal. Uh, not even $12 ice cream, no deal. <laughs> Just no deal. And there may not be a deal. A major impasse struck the second stimulus negotiations yesterday, and there may not be any end in, end in sight. Sunday night is the end of the second extension. I'm losing track of how many extensions they've had. Uh, and if they do not get a, another deal hatched or another extension hatched, the government will shut down. But more importantly, the deal situation that they have right now is not progressing. It's going from bad to worse. Needless to say, no one's fighting for your stimulus check to be larger. We're not knowing much about the deal provisions. We don't know much about the deal offers. And moreover, there actually is no deal. <laughs> Again, there's no deal, just a lot of proposals. Uh, deal or no deal? <laughs> no deal. But the good deal is that this is an early morning's LLA broadcast. Hey, good morning, everybody. It's early morning to LA, the 6 a.m. edition. How are you? The toast is toast and the butter is butter. I'm here, you're here. And apparently, congressional leaders were not in town yesterday, despite assurances that they were going to be. Uh, Mitch had ordered them to all remain in town, but when he called a vote for some um, Senate, uh, some cabinet member appointee and agency appointees for sex, sex, stuff that had nothing to do with your stimulus, he couldn't get the vote passed because 12 of them were absent. That did not look good for Mitch. Uh, he was not a happy camper, but I'm a happy camper if you subscribe. Please go to the Funch channel, subscribe, uh, because no one's fight, fo fighting and focusing more around the clock to get you money. Money from states, money from cities, money from counties. Cares Act one money that you can get right now, not five days from now, not five weeks from now, not five months from now. This is five, ten, fifteen thousand $15,000 that you can get landing in your bank account by following the advice of this channel and using the volunteers of this channel as well. So please subscribe. Also, like this video. It really helps in the algorithm rankings. In this video, I'm going to go over what happened last night and where we are today. And over there on the side is an instant premiere. Yeah, an instant premiere. Uh, it's featured every day at 6 a.m. Pacific Eastern Standard Time. It allows you to chat with your power buddies about what's going on, what's happening, who's there, who's not there. And what did you do last night at the casino? <laughs> So much development around the clock. And with that, let's get to the breaking news. The breaking news is that there's no deal. And the lack of a deal for the second stimulus package is the result of a provision entered um, yesterday by a Republican to ensure that there is no longer this sort of path of money from the Treasury to the Federal Reserve. The provision was detailed in briefings to caucus members, and the Republicans came out vehemently in favor of it, and the Democrats came out vehemently not in favor of it. And so now there's indications uh, and agreements that, hey, either we get this provision taken care of or removed, or we'll have no deal. And this could ultimately implode the entire situation. Viewers were asked yesterday, would you agree to shut to no deal? for a bad deal or deal. And viewers nine out of 10 said no deal. They didn't like the $600 stimulus check, which still seems to be floating around. They didn't like the lack of FPUC retroactive, giving up 30 weeks of FPUC retroactive. And they didn't like uh, the remainder of what's going on. They of course do like that there's PUA and UI extended, but um, that's where we are today. You know, we went into the weekend hearing that $1,200 stimulus check was gonna be a battleground for certain people. It wasn't. And as we go into the end of the weekend, no one's even talking about the stimulus check. Now they're talking about this provision about the Federal Reserve. Going into the weekend, um, we had heard that $1,200 was a big battle issue. 
And that just does not seem to be the issue anymore. Um, Holly said, Josh Holly said, I think it's vital that any relief include direct payment and we're not going to vote for it if it doesn't. I'm also going to or urge the president to veto any bill that does not have direct payments in it of about $1,200. We had a very good conversation about it, Holly referring to the president, and you know he's a, it's a pretty tough, thorough conversation. I asked a number of questions of play of different proposals, and I think it's fair to say he was surprised in the direction that they were headed. The president, in, tune, in turn, had asked for a 600 to excuse me, a $1,200 to $2,000 stimulus check, $2,000 does not seem to be one of the proposals in play. Rather, the proposed amounts that are in play still are $600, $1,200. Um, the situation by Friday afternoon was Hawley shouting and screaming that he was not being debriefed about anything, and he's not the only one. AOC said the same thing on Saturday. Hawley on Friday said, we've been in the dark for days on end. We have absolutely no idea what's actually in this package. I'm not willing to sit by and be told nothing and be given no information. Just be asked to do as you're told. This is a reaching point of absurdity. Hawley, according to Politico, at the time, Friday was declined to say whether he would whether the $600 individual check plan would be enough to subside his that threat to do an extension. Later that day, he was told by negotiators that there is a stimulus check in there. They would not tell him how much. He would not tell us how much. And then he ultimately agreed to an extension. That sort of folding up of chairs is not, like lawn chairs, is not sitting well for viewers. Bernie Sanders did much of the same. He had pushed for $1,200 stimulus checks in the earlier day, and then later in the day just said much of nothing. Holly had said early Friday, I hear all these kinds of stuff, and I read it from you guys, news reporters, but I hear nothing from the leadership. I hear nothing about negotiations. I have no idea what's going on, and I'm not prepared to sign off on a CR until I know what's going on. That's not an unusual comment. We see that same comment coming from AOC on Saturday, who said that, that they ostensibly give you a you know, 3,000 page bill to look at and then say, here's 15 minutes to read it and then we're about to vote. She said, this is absurd and I'm not going to do it. But so far they have done it. They have done extensions of the CR based upon a lack of reading information. Holly had said earlier in the week that there had to be $1,200 in the stimulus checks or that he would block it. Uh, we all, what these Americans have asked for is not for a government to solve all the problems. It's for a government to give them a handout. It's a chance to get back on their feet, a chance to provide themselves a chance to recover when they've been asked to sacrifice so much. That's why the least we can do is provide them direct relief to every American worker who needs it. That was his comment when he introduced a bill for a second round of stimulus checks on Friday that was ultimately blocked by Senator Ron Johnson. But what Hawley didn't do is follow through. Ron Johnson simply objected, a simple objection called a killed uh, Hawley's attempt for a $1,200 stimulus check. And then Hawley never defended the amount of the $1,200 ever since that day. Since early Friday, uh, Josh Hawley, the Republican out of Missouri has not defended the $1,200 amount. Rather, he's folded up again like a lawn chair and simply said, you know what, there's a stimulus check involved. I'm happy. Well, wait a second, what about the amount? You're happy for any amount? Ron Johnson trended all online Friday for his horrid remarks that stimulus checks are for bad people, that they're, they're people that don't need relief, that they're people that don't contribute to the American economy all really distasteful remarks. One of the reasons we have a $27.4 trillion in deficits is we only speak about need, we only speak in terms of compassion. We all have compassions, we, we all wanna fulfill those needs. We just don't wanna talk in numbers very often, we don't analyze the data. Ironically, he is correct about not analyzing data, but it's coming on both sides. Holly is telling us now, going into Saturday, he's fine with a stimulus check. Well, wait a second, where's the data on the stimulus check? How much is the stimulus check? We simply just don't know. And Holly may not know either. Mitch McConnell has said on going on Friday, I'm even more optimistic now than I was last night. This was Friday, that a bicameral framework for the major rescue package is close at hand. Let's face it, it doesn't help to keep on hearing while we're having good discussions. But that was Friday. That did not stay the same by Saturday. <laughs> by Saturday, things started to fall apart. And by Saturday evening, they had fallen apart. On Saturday, Mitch McConnell and Nancy Pelosi again spoke uh, uh, additionally 
over the dispute that first manifested itself on Friday afternoon. The dispute on Friday was about the Federal Reserve's emergency lending powers. And that dispute came after a, a, the, the, the language of the bill was starting to be written. And the language of the bill uh, and, that, and that wording came from a rep, from a um, elected official by the name of Toomey. When Toomey's words were manifested, Senator Pat Toomey, it became divisive. What happened? Senator Majority Le House Majority Leader Steny Hoyer told reporters Friday, I think we've been close to it for a long time, but the ones that don't agree are, but the, but the ones we don't agree to are pretty serious. What is that? That's Toomey's language. Hoyer initially did not tell viewers what is so serious. And the language was Hoyer, was, was Toomey's remarks. It's totally political and, in my opinion, a putrid effort to diminish the President Biden's authority, said Steny Hoyer. His comments were not alone. By Saturday evening, we saw what was happening. No one was fighting for your stimulus check. No one was fighting for the amount of the stimulus check. No one was fighting for uh, for retroactive FPC. No one was fighting for eviction moratorium. No one was fighting for mortgage forbearance. What they were fighting over was language inserted by a person named Toomey. Hoyer described the, the battleground earlier in the day, which became very device, divisive by the end of the day. This is Saturday. It's totally political, in my opinion, a future spin to, to diminish President Biden's authority. What's at issue was the ability of President Biden to spend money as he so wishes. And now it seems as though that battle may not end. The Senate got briefings and the House got briefings, and ultimately the positions were the same. The Republicans supported the language from Toomey, the Democrats despised the language and said they would not agree to it. And then there came versions of how to deal with the situation. Mitt Romney said, as a Republican, the language is not as bad as the Democrats are seeing. They need to understand the language and either they're just manifesting a fake narrative or they're not, they're misreading it. <laughs> Democrats said, we read the language very clear, Mitt. It's not good and we don't like that language. Representative uh, Tom Cole, who's a Republican out of Oklahoma, said, I'm wondering why we can't get a bill that we're all reading about in the paper done. It could have been passed since July. Uh, well, if it was passed in July, it would have had $400 of FPC retroactive, which was offered by Steve Mnuchin in July. Also offered in July was a full stimulus check of $1,200. Also offered in July by Nancy Pelosi, who's has to pay a $10,000. Also offered in July was EIDL. But none of those things are in this thing, so what is he talking about? Much of nothing. Mm -hmm. uh, hopefully we're in the visual side of the finish line here. Oh, I guess he's using my expressions now. Cole said, it's Christmas. I'm determined to be optimistic. That's wonderful. <laughs> it's Christmas. I'm determined to be optimistic. Oh, well, thank you. Uh, for New Year's, are you determined to be not optimistic? Not very clear what that means. The fact that these negotiations are happening back door and we're hearing them secondhand and what is this should be unacceptable. Who is that? That's AOC. AOC Saturday repeated the comments of Josh Hawley, which was basically there's a couple of four people in a private room, the private society, the secret society of four in a secret room discussing secret provisions or secret, secret stimulus check of a secret amount. No one is telling anything any, anyhow, except they did talk about Toomey, uh, and that you're supposed to just be given the thing and say A or nay. Holly, a Republican, and AOC, a Democrat, both said they're not going to do this. They're both junior members of Congress, and they said we're not going to be spoon-fed things and do as we're told. AOC said this is not sufficient. You need to tell me ahead of time what's going on. I have to have time to read it through. And this is what she said. The fact that these are just negotiations that just happened back door and we're hearing them secondhand, what's in there should be unacceptable. When it, we'll get the final text, and they'll call a vote 30 minutes after the text is released, and you're frantically trying to sift through it. It's terrible. Understand when they're done with this final bill, if it ever is finalized, it's going to be about 3,000 pages long. In words of AOC, here, read 3,000 pages in five minutes and get ready to vote. I tried to read Josh Hawley's bill, which was just 12 pages in three minutes. It didn't make sense. Needless to say, that's how they're trying to ram something down people's throats. But apparently someone got tipped off by Toomey. And that language from Toomey stopped everything. It also stopped discussions about stimulus check. 
the broadcast news reports, the print news reports, the financial news reports that were putting stimulus check at the front story all weekend long stopped it and focused it on Toomey when this story manifested itself. Again, the narrative's a little bit off. The broadcast news reporters are saying millions of Americans are facing homelessness tomorrow morning because they can't get a stimulus relief done today. The truth of the matter is that millions of Americans are homeless already because no stimulus package was passed in July. The truth of the matter is that most of the stimulus relief that they're proposing in here you would never receive until February. Unemployment FPUC at $300 a week, you won't see that till, till in January. You may see it in February. Uh, you won't see it in December. PUA and UI extended by act of Congress where the Congress is pay, picking up the bill. Not going to see that in the state's coffers until at least a month from now. So why is there an opposition to a stimulus check, which is the fastest way to get money right now, right now, right here, right now? Doesn't make sense. But does what will make sense is for you to stay with me for the continuation of this broadcast at the 6.30 edition. I'll have more about these developments, and there's a lot more to tell you. See, they're on my left hand. I got a lot more to tell you. The continuation of the second stimulus drama continues at 6.30 a.m. Eastern Standard Time with the continuation of, holiday, of early morning to LA. I'll see you then. As always, stay informed, stay smiling, subscribe, hit the alert button, and like this video. And have a good morning.